Best Beer Forum videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is the Into the Weekend with Bet DSI show that we do every week with Brent, the headlines manager from DSI Sportsbook. Right now we're going to, it's Thursday afternoons, we're going to cover a college football week 10, and then tomorrow we'll do a call covering uh, NFL week 9. Brent, thanks for being back with us this week. Good to be on with you, Peter. All right, let's just get right into it. Uh, before we get to the uh, sharp plays of the week, there's three games specifically that I want to just get your opinions on, see what uh, what kind of action you've taken on the Michigan-Michigan State. Of course, big game, Michigan off the bye, but a lot of people at SBR are saying that uh, Michigan State, despite the fact that you know they're roughly evenly uh, ranked and and that Michigan does have the bye, that Michigan State is going to be uh, the side with value. And I did notice that the line went up, so I'm thinking maybe some sharp action came in on Michigan State. Volume. It's all just volume, okay. actually, Peter. That one. I actually got the the counts probably about two to one in favor of Michigan State. Our money's about three to one there, and it's just like I say, it's just volume. I don't have any sharps involved really on either side in this game. I do have action, like, pretty pretty good sharp money on the the total going over 46. We're sitting at 46 and a half right now. But in terms of the side itself, Michigan and Michigan State, we're sitting at Michigan State minus five, 46 and a half. And again, just just a bunch of volume on Michigan State. All right. I was thinking maybe we would hear about some sharp action on that way one way or another, but I guess not yet. Then Miami-Florida State, right? Big marquee matchup to a top 10 teams of Florida State, though a 22-point home favorite. Uh, have you gotten any notable action on that one or just, again, high volume? Yeah, well, this is, I mean, it, it, the volume has been in, insane on this game. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, we talk about a lot of times coming down to a game, it's all about the number, and this uh -huh. is one of those situations where I've got money that we respect a lot on Florida State, minus 21 and minus 21 and a half. And we've got money that we respect a lot on Miami, Florida, plus 22 and a half. Now, yeah. 21 and a half, 22 and a half, what's the difference? You know, I, that's not for you or I to decide. That's just where the Sharps went. So they laid the 21, they laid 21 and a half. Another group came in and took the 22 and a half. So, we're, you know, we got really good action there. We The money slightly favors Miami, Florida right now. The count's pretty much even. But we'll be sitting, I can imagine, we'll be sitting between, you know, around 21, 22, the, the whole up until, you know, kickoff. And we'll be really, really balanced and have a ton of action on that game. All right, well, that sounds good for you. So you've actually gotten significant sharp action on both sides of, of this matchup. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I kind of like it when we have, you know, right. sharps all on one side so we can kind of, you know, turn our action a little bit that one one way if we want to, you know, if the number fits and stuff like that. But this is one of those cases where we're just likely just going to have to sit back and collect our juice and be happy with that. Okay, sounds good. And then a uh, big uh, SEC matchup, Georgia at Florida, both teams off of a bye, and both teams were having major injury problems this year. So uh, I'm looking at this line in this game, and I'm thinking that there's probably some telling sharp action uh, one way or another on this one. This is actually a really disappointing game, man. Maybe it's because they're off buys. Maybe it's because of injuries. I don't know, but it's absolutely dead, the action on this really? game. I mean, you take a look at, like, the Miami-Florida-Florida Florida State game we just touched mm -hmm. on. I've got ten times more bet betting action on that game than I do on this Georgia-Florida game. I mean, wow. I, it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense other than the points that you just mentioned. But we're sitting at Georgia minus three, minus 05, so Florida's plus three, minus 115. Totals 47 and a half. I, I, I took a little bit of money on the over 47 that we, you know, money we respect, kind of sharp action. But uh, it's, it's like it's really, really dead this game. Hmm, that's kind of surprising. I mean, wouldn't you normally in general expect that uh, games with more competitive lines to have a more, you know, to have higher volume? Yeah, I would expect a ton of action on this game. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm really surprised that we haven't seen it, Peter. Well, let's take a look at the rest of the card for college football week 10. What can you tell us in the way of uh, notable sharp action, notable high volume games, and maybe notable uh, sharp public splits, sides or totals? This is the part of the show where we basically just hand out free winners, right, Peter? Yeah, that's what, I, all right, from now on, that's, what I'm, that's how I'm going to intro it. All right, uh, so what can you tell us about the rest of the card? <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. Yeah, what, can you what kind of free winners can you give us from the rest of the card, <laughs> college go. football week? Well, let's, let's talk about the sharp action because that's, that's what it's all about. Okay. I, and uh, fr Friday actually is a big game. We've got USC at Oregon State. We're sitting at Oregon State minus three and a half right now, and I can see that line going up to four because I've got sharp money all over Oregon State. The count's about six to one in favor of Oregon State. The money's higher than that, probably about eight to one. But I had sharps lay three minus 120. I had them lay three and a half. I had them lay the first half minus one and a half. I I've had everything all one way in terms of Oregon State. I'm surprised there wasn't more money on USC coming back, but nothing's come back at all the other way. So that's a, a surprising game, but really, really heavy one-sided action in favor of Oregon State. I would look for that line and go up to four. Uh, moving along, we've got, uh, I mean, I wanted to touch on Tennessee, Missouri, but mm -hmm. it turns out I mean, it's just all about the number right now on that right. one. Missouri minus 10 was really sharp money. I had sharp money on the Missouri money line as well when it was around like minus 365, but I also took sharp money on Tennessee plus 13. So right. I'm not going to say that's you know, a sharp play either way, but I do have sharps on Missouri minus 10. Tennessee plus 13 was sharp. 
So I'm, we're sitting at uh, Missouri minus 10.5 right now for that reason. The count's probably about 2-1 to one in favor of Missouri. Uh, the money's slightly... Uh, no, it favors Missouri actually quite big, uh, actually. I got, got a lot of money on Missouri, so we're going to hope for, for Tennessee there. But I could see that line climbing just to try and get something back because it didn't come until we went to 13. Uh, big Pac-10 game, uh, Arizona on the road. They're at, they're at California, laying 16 points now. Uh, the count's way over on Arizona, and I have sharp money on them as well. Now the Sharps laid the 14 and they laid 15. We're sitting at 16 right now with Arizona. That was a definite sharp play. Uh, Colorado, UCLA, I mean, wow. UCLA minus 24, minus 25 and a half, minus 26 and a half. All UCLA money. We're sitting at minus 28 right now, but we've got some real strong sharps laying UCLA. And also on the over, they went over 55 and a half, over 56 and a half. We're sitting at 57 and a half right now. And again, I've, I've got nothing back on Colorado. That's UCLA at home laying the 28 now. Start at 24. And Nebraska is another sharp play. I've got about uh, three to one the count in favor of Nebraska. Money's about five to one. They laid Nebraska minus five, minus five and a half, and that's all one way as well. Uh, Utah State, they're at home to Hawaii. The line's up to 24 now. One is 21 and a half and 23. Sharp money was on Utah State. UL Lafayette, another sharp side. That was uh, they're at home to New Mexico State. Line is 31 and a half right now. Wow. They had sharp money at 28 and a half and 31. And yeah, that about that about sums it up. That covers everything, Peter. All right. Well, let me just ask you a one quick question then before we wrap up. I mean, can we just get all this information just by looking at the line moves at DSI? I mean, can we assume that like any time a line jumps from like 28 to 31, that's because of sharp action? It no, not necessarily. I mean, it depends who plays it, when they play it. I mean, sometimes if a sharp doesn't come in, you know, it could be square money that, that moves, the, moves the line until a sharp guy comes on the other side if they're interested. Sometimes you just get one-sided all on public action. I mean, a right. game like Lafayette, New Mexico State, I mean, public guys generally aren't going to play that much, but you have people who, you know, you, as you talked about, the oil money, who, <laughs> who likes to throw, throw the money around. So, I mean, you take a, you know, a, a full bet on Lafayette, money is 28 and a half, you're gonna, probably going to go 29 or 29 and a half. You take another bet, you're Probably going to be up to 30, 30 and a half. So it doesn't necessarily have to be sharp money, but a game like that sometimes, yeah, it's like, you know, who dabbles in that kind of stuff? Usually it's sharps. Yeah, well, there was another almost identical game with an identical line and move, which was the Marshall game, right? Marshall is like a 28 point favorite, and then they, you know, now they're like minus 31. Uh, but it's interesting that you, you identified the uh, Louisiana Lafayette game as a game of sharp action, but that one didn't make it. So I'm assuming that that uh, line move was not driven by sharp action then. Yeah, and, and again, you can't kind of paint the brush. I mean, it, it can be in, injury information. It can be all kinds of stuff, you know, in terms of why a, a line will move. So you have to pay attention to, to all these games, of course. The same kinds of teams, the exact same line, the exact same line movement. We can't then just assume that both line movements were caused by the same thing. That's why we do this show. Exactly. Thanks so much, Brent, and I'll talk to you tomorrow for NFL Week 9.